Hello again, everybody. Welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips joined by Kip Balknight to talk some Gamecock baseball. Kip, glad to have you along today. How are you? Doing great, Emerson. Thanks for having me. Always good to have you. Let's talk some Gamecock baseball here. South Carolina dropping two out of three at Vandy over the weekend, Kip. First career complete game for Gamecock starting pitcher Clark Schmidt in game one. Had a rough first inning. Vandy touched him up for four runs, but Schmidt would settle down and complete the ball game. He's now 6-1 and one on the year with a 1.8 ERA. Vandy beat South Carolina. 6-3 to three in Game 1, and it was Vandy starter Jordan Sheffield with nine strikeouts and seven innings of work. So the Commodores came out strong at home like we suspected they might. Uh, then in Game 2, South Carolina got a shutout performance. Braden Webb, the freshman right-hander with eight scoreless innings of work, 11 strikeouts. South Carolina beat Vandy 4 to nothing. And Webb is now 6-1 and one with a 1.7 ERA, and he's got 25 strikeouts and only six hits allowed in his last two outings. And Webb did not give up a hit against Vandy until a two-out double that came in the sixth inning. Junior left-hander Josh Reagan pitched a perfect night for the Gamecocks, so South Carolina and Vandy split the first two games of the series. But then Vanderbilt came back and won game three. Carolina had taken a 4-1 to lead into the bottom of the fifth, but Vandy scored five runs in the bottom of the fifth. They would add four more in the sixth and the seventh. Vanderbilt beat South Carolina 10-6. to So the Gamecocks now... 24 and 5 on the year and 7 and 2 in the SEC. Vandy's 23 and 5 and 6 and 3 in the conference. Kip, we talked about the importance of this Vanderbilt series. Both South Carolina and Vandy ranked in the top five in the nation, and Vandy did what they had to do. They held serve at home. They won the series, but the Gamecocks did manage to take that middle game. That was important. Yeah, it was important, Emerson. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously it was a disappointing weekend, and, and couple that with a midweek loss. Uh, that they had in, in, against College of Charleston. And I think the biggest thing for me was uh, just a huge character uh, plus out of out of Clark Schmidt. I mean, I, it, it doesn't surprise me. I thought that's the guy we had pitching on Friday night, and to give up four like that and to basically be able to erase that and come back and throw a complete game on the road against the top five team in Vandy, just to me – not only set up a, a, an opportunity for South Carolina to still take the series, and they were in a great position to do so, um, but just showed me a heck of a lot about Clark Schmidt. If I'm a uh, you know a major league team, and that those are the types of outings that to me show a heck of a lot more. He's obviously got the stuff, but to be able to swallow that, pitch for your team, give your team a chance to win on the next two nights was outstanding. And actually, he gave them a chance to win on Friday night. Unfortunately, um, the the starter for Vandy was pretty daggum good. I mean, he was just, uh, as advertised, a very, very uh, fierce competitor and had a wonderful fastball, threw his fastball inside for strikes uh, all night long and was just pretty electric. But moving on to Saturday, you can't say enough about what, you know, that – you know, we were able to do on Saturday to come back and, 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 and pitch a shutout and four to nothing was uh, second to none and was absolutely outstanding. And, uh, you know, to, to to have a stopper like that to be able to come in and pitch on Saturday was huge. And I think it set us up for a game on Sunday that we looked like we were in command and in control and Adam Hills, you know, throwing the ball pretty well. He's got good stuff. And, you know, it gave us an opportunity, in my opinion, I think that is where – I really, really think a shift of, of of Josh Reagan being able to come into that game to me in the fifth inning. I, I would have personally left Adam Hill in there. I thought he still had some bullets left, and it was four to one in the fifth inning, and I'd have maybe challenged him and and uh, tried to get a little bit more out of him. But to me, in my opinion, we we've got to find somebody uh, in those situations, and I, and I just don't know if it's Brandon Murray. Uh, with all due respect to him, I think it's, it, I, I just believe it's Josh Reagan. I think he's a guy that honestly has proven he can be a great closer and, 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 and do that. But sometimes in a weekend, you, you might not have but one close. I mean, we really didn't have a close situation. It was four to nothing on Saturday when he came in. So we never really had, um, a close situation because Brandon Webb did so well and we got those two runs in the, I believe the top of the ninth to extend the lead to four to nothing on Saturday, on Friday, excuse me. So I really look back at it and I think the key that it was those middle innings. We needed somebody to bridge the gap. And, and you may say, Oh, well, gosh, Tyler Johnson, he gave it up on Sunday or on uh, Saturday. 
that was a tough game. It was a tough game. The wind's blowing out 20, 25 miles an hour. And I also think Tyler Johnson's at his best when he comes in just for one inning, two max. I think he's a, he's got a closer mentality. I think using his fastball, I think can be a lot more electric when he's only got to come in and blow it out for an inning or inning and a third. Josh Reagan's a guy that he obviously can be a starter. Uh, easily if, if South Carolina asked him to do so. I just think it helps our team more, and we're more valuable if we can use a Josh Reagan a heck of a lot more. I hate to see him only be able to come in and pitch, you know, an inning in, uh, in, in some important parts of the game. I'd rather see him pitch a little bit more, and I think Tyler Johnson suited more for, a, like I said, a short stint, a closer role, but a lot of positives, a lot of good things set up. College of Charleston's obviously a good team. Vanderbilt's obviously a good team. You see the rankings. They didn't dip much, too, in the rankings, as they shouldn't have, in my opinion. You go on the road, you play a top-five team, you, you, you're competitive in all three games, and, um, you know, they're in a good position. They're 7-2 and two in the conference. I think Chad Holbrook would have taken this any day of the week. I know I certainly would have, so... A heck of a lot more good than bad. They've got a tough matchup coming against Coastal Carolina. They're certainly playing well, and we'll see how South Carolina can respond. All right, a couple of other items from the Vanderbilt series here. D.C. Arendis hit 400 against Vandy. He had four runs scored, a home run, and two runs knocked in. Alex Destino, three for six against Vandy. He's now got a 20-game hitting streak. That's the longest hitting streak by a Gamecock since Jackie Bradley Jr. in 2010. Bradley Jr. went 22 consecutive games with a hit. Gene Cohn's got a 14-game hitting streak as well. Jonah Bride hit his first career home run in Saturday's game, a two-run homer in the first, but the Gamecocks were unable to hold on to that 4-1 to one lead, and Vandy won 10-6 to six on Saturday to take game three and win the series. So, Kip, uh, let's take a look at the SEC standings now. Vandy wins two of three, but the Gamecocks are still tied for first in the SEC with Florida. Florida swept Texas A&M this weekend, so the Gamecocks and Gators are 7-2. and two. Vandy and Kentucky right behind at 6-3. and three. Mississippi State leads the West at 6-3. and three. So, disappointing, like you said, to drop two of three at Vandy, but the Gamecocks still in very good shape in SEC play. Yeah, they are. Obviously, Florida's pretty daggum good and, and going uh, and sweeping Texas A&M. I think Florida, I've heard, uh, potentially has six or seven first-rounders in their lineup. So it's uh, are, are on their team, you know, with the, all three starting pitchers being potential first-rounders. So, you know, I, again, South Carolina's in a great position. They deserve it. They're 24-5 overall, 18-1 and at home, and 6-3 and three on the road. All those numbers are good. They're fielding much better. Their hitting is much better. You know, you have to give credit to Vanderbilt. I mean, Vanderbilt did a wonderful job. Again, it's always easy to come back and say things after the fact, and I'm certainly not questioning Chad Oldbrook or Jerry Myers or anything. Uh, they're doing an outstanding job. I'm just giving my opinion of things I see, and I just think that um, I just would like to see Josh Reagan pitch more important innings. I think that, you know, it's – you know, in this day and age in baseball, you just never know. You could go a whole weekend, especially with our starters. Our starters could literally, and our hitting is so good, it could be six to nothing or six to one. I mean, you look at the series coming up against Tennessee uh, after Coastal, and heck, it, it you know Tennessee's not been playing very well. They're I think three and six in conference and seventeen and eleven overall. So that could be a situation where hopefully, if Carolina's hitting the ball well and fielding the ball well defensively. They could be up four, five, six runs going into the eighth and ninth inning and not saying those aren't important innings, but those are innings that hopefully you can use somebody else in your bullpen and save your closer and not have to bring him in. But I just, um, I just, I, 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 I hope that maybe they consider that and look at that because I do think it could be beneficial for them because I just think Tyler Johnson can be. Uh, he could be that guy. He could be that one-inning guy. And, it, again, it's hard to question what they're doing because they're doing really, really well. Uh, but um, they've got their hands full against Coastal. I'm sure they're going to be – I don't I haven't heard the pitcher matchup yet, but I'm sure they're going to be out guns of blazing. I think the last loss they've had is against College of Charleston. So they, they've been hitting the ball really well, scoring, I believe, 10 runs or more in the last five, six games. So they're, they're, uh, they're definitely going to be a tough test for the game top Wednesday night. Gamecock baseball talk here on Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips with Kip Balknight. The Gamecock pitching staff leads the SEC with a team ERA of 2.52. 
And the Gamecock staff also leads the conference with a 208 opponent's batting average. So the pitching's been outstanding. Let's talk about Coastal Kip. This will be a Tuesday night game, 7 o'clock first pitch at Founders Park. And you mentioned Coastal red hot right now, winners of seven in a row. And they've scored ten runs or more in each of those seven wins. And they have not lost since March the 22nd when they fell at the College of Charleston by a final of four to two. So we know these in-state schools kind of have a chip on their shoulder when they play the Gamecocks, as we found out with that Charleston game last week. And the in-state schools want to beat the Gamecocks, so the Gamecocks got a tough task tomorrow night. They do. I mean, again, it's the end. but you want it that way. I think that's a good thing. It's good for our state. It's good for their RPI, and it's a game that they need to win at home. It's a um, it, Again, it's not going to be an easy task, but hopefully – uh, you know, they're not down in the dirt. Hopefully they're not, you know, too upset about the loss. You know, I mean, because, again, it's not like they lost on the road against a, a, a bad team. They played Vanderbilt, the team that obviously won the national championship and played for it in the last two years. I mean, they are uh, an excellent team and well coached by uh, Tim Corbin. So it, it, it will be a tough matchup. I think it's one that South Carolina's going to need to score five or more runs at least. And, Hopefully we can pitch well enough and play good defense and get that timely hitting to be able to uh, to, to get back on the winning track and get ready for Tennessee coming to town on Friday night. All right, the Coastal game Tuesday night, 7 o'clock start, will be televised on the SEC Network. Coastal is 20-9 and nine overall. They swept Gardner-Webb over the weekend. They're 5-1 and one in Big South play, and Coastal scored 36 runs in those three games, the wins over Gardner-Webb. So that will set us up for the midweek schedule, just the one midweek game this week, Tuesday night at home against Coastal Carolina, and then Tennessee will come to Columbia for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series, and we'll preview that series for you coming up later in the week here on Gamecock Central Radio. Kip Balk night twice a week on Gamecock Central Radio. Kip, we appreciate your insight and your time. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Go Gamecock. All right, that's Kip Balk night. I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for being with us. (laughs) 